So we're going to begin this review of EpiInfo by reviewing how to create a form. We start here in the Create Forms button and then look to the uh, left here. We want to have this canvas over here on the right set up so we can uh, start right clicking and putting our field names in. But first we have to create a new project. We have an old project, we can go File, Recent Projects and find it and open it up. But if not, we create a new project. We can either click here or we could just click up here, New Project. Now we have to name this project. I'll call it Form Demo. Here I can write a bit about it. It's quite useful to be able to say this is a form that will be used well, this form is used to collect basic patient information at uh, basic health units. So we provide information so our colleagues, when they're using our forms, know at least what the intention and purpose of the form was when it was made. They may not be around when we make the form. This will be very helpful. So we'll call it form at BHU, something like that. <clears throat> OK. Now, we're creating a new project by clicking OK here. It'll take a little while to set up, and then we can start actually making our form. You see the uh, canvas on the right has become white, little dots on it. We can now actually start to put variables here. And the most important thing to remember here is to right-click where we want to start making our uh, new fields. So if I right-click here, we can put new field in, text, etc. If we want to, or we can drag and drop like this. Click on text and drop it where we want to. Have it. So that's where we're going to put a text field in. So we're putting in name. Up name there. Field names automatically assigned by EpiInfo, and so we want to put in 25 characters to allow for a reasonably long name. We can do that. If we click required. That means that the person entering the data must put a name in here, or they can't continue. Uh, it can be dangerous to put required in because if the data is missing, the data entry person cannot continue to enter um, until they can find that piece of information. So always think carefully about making something required or not. OK. Now let's just use reds. So let's try that again. doesn't like it. You may think it's too short. But here we've got name of participant or name of patient to BHU form. And we'll just click there. Name of patient has come up as the abbreviated uh, field name. This will appear in the top of the column of your data. So if you look, view it uh, in a database or in Excel, you should see name of patient at the top of the column. OK. Click OK. There it is. Now, we can move this around if we want to. Move any field name around. Um, we left click using our mouse on this part here on the label and move it. If we left click our mouse on the actual box here, it moves by itself. But we want to move both together, so we actually move by clicking on the label for the field name. Now, let's put another field name in. Um, let's say we're going to put in age. Now, age is a number variable. We can choose number here, drag it on to the canvas, or we can just right click, new field to number, age here, automatically assigned. Now, the pattern. This is important. We click on pattern here because this tells us how many character spaces are assigned to the age. You can see here that's one space that would last to put up to like 0 to 9 years. This would be 0 to 99 years. And this would allow 0 to 999 years. Let's choose that in case we have a few people over 
a hundred years of age going in here. Okay. We click OK. And we can again align that. Now let's say we want to put in the date that they visited the clinic. Click in there, good. And the date of BHU visit. We could also put time, or we could use a date and time variable there. Now, so we want to have um, presenting complaint. Maybe we'll allow 60 characters there. It's still brief. You can see it's a much longer text box. We could code these. Um, this is going to be a free text choice. We can put whatever text we want in here, but perhaps we say we wanted to um, just have certain conditions there. Um, so that it's easy just to click on certain conditions. Um, we could use legal values and we could have condition code. Now data source, we come down here, we're going to produce a series of legal values that will be allowed to be listed here we go and we create the data source that links to these codes. We've got to create new at this point. And it will come up with a little table we can complete. So this will be a drop down box now. So we could have in here um, injury Infection, uh, obstetric, pediatric. But we should use codes that we actually need uh, as part of our overall information strategy. These are just very simple. Uh, just a very simple example. What this means we can just uh, click on these and, and select them rather than having to write them out. And of course this is not what you use in a real situation because um, you know we could have infection uh, in an obstetric or pediatric situation, just an example. But if you want to code, uh, you could do this. You can have cascading codes where you select one lot of codes and move to another. And again that's further explained on the Epi Info website. Perhaps a better use of legal values might be in nominating the uh, Zonkarg or district of the patient. Now remember we might have districts for the patient residence, but we might also have a district for where the patient is being seen. For the BHU, they might be different. So again, for a drop down list, we'd start creating them. Uh, like this. So we might have um, Tumpu, Paro, Wongdi, uh, what else? Let's have Ha, and obviously we put all 20 disks in there, and then we just click on them. Okay. Now, um, you can also put, if you want to change any of these, you decide they're wrong, you go back and you right click on them and see properties. Now, we could put a range in here. We might put, um, I don't know, 1 to 110, something like that. I expect anyone to be over 110 perhaps. You 
could make something like